want to um, go all around the world, bringing your music, bringing your acting, bringing your message to the, to the audience. Singer Ricky Martin has done almost everything there is to do in show business. From gold records to starring roles in soap operas, Ricky has what it takes to conquer Hollywood. I love what I do. Uh, I've been doing this since, you know, since I'm 12 years old and this is my life. Can't complain. Nor can his fans. As Ricky travels the world to satisfy one of the largest fanatical followings enjoyed by any Latin singer. Stay tuned as we profile singing, dancing and acting sensation Ricky Martin. Hey everybody, welcome to Ricky Martin Uncut. I'm Todd Newton and today we're coming to you from the Conga Room, one of Hollywood's favorite venues for Latin performers. Now, even though he's young in years, Ricky Martin is definitely a seasoned entertainer. I mean, come on, his ability to succeed in just about every facet of show business proves that this guy is a talent to be reckoned with. Now, a lot of you may think that Ricky was an overnight success. That's not true. You see, Mr. Martin had a very early start. I started doing TV commercials and, and child modeling when I was eight years old. I guess it was always, always in me. Uh, I don't know, I just know that one day I told my parents I want to be an artist. They were like, huh? <laughs> While other kids his age were on the playground, Ricky Martin heard music in his future. And soon his face was recognized all over the globe as one of the five singing sensations in the teen group, Menudo. I think Menudo was the best way to start. I had the chance to meet a lot of people. I had the chance to, to, to go to different countries. But Ricky credits his own country of Puerto Rico for nurturing his musical talents. It's, it's a very small island that has like 100 radio stations. So it doesn't matter where you're standing, you'll be listening to music. Growing up with music and singing in Menudo gave Ricky the entertainment know-how that he still carries with him today. But I guess for me it was important to start then and uh, with the ups and downs that I've had in my career, I can, I can take advantage of those experiences and, and avoid them or look for them. While performing at a young age had its advantages, as a teenager, Ricky missed out on some of the pleasures of adolescence. I didn't go to school when I was in the band. When I was in high school, I went, it was tutoring. So my classroom was a hotel room, uh, which is something that I miss. And up until today, I miss it. You know, you know I have my friends, they, talk, they all talk about um, you know, senior year, senior proms, graduation, and I never had that. The topsy-turvy life of being a teenage star took its toll on Ricky, and he decided to take some time for himself. In 1989, I left the band, and uh, I finished high school, and I, I, was, I was 17 years old then, and I moved to New York. Uh, I did nothing. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be with myself. You know, the first five years of my career were so fast, they were so intense, that I just wanted to be alone, and I did. I was. I was content with that moment in my life. But it wasn't long before Ricky started to miss the spotlight. His love for his fans and music brought him back to the stage. I don't want to stop doing this. This is what I live for, you know what I mean? Just being able to be in front of an audience, just to see their reaction, just to... You know, it's been 15, 13 years and I haven't been able to find a word that can, that can actually describe what you go through when you're on stage. I, I just know it's fascinating. Ricky loves performing live, but sold out world tours can sometimes be exhausting. I think discipline is very important when you start a tour. It is very hard to be disciplined when you're on the road because anything can happen. You can start a show at 8, but then again, the show, the show can start at, at 10 o'clock. You hop on a plane, you get to the next city, you do the press conference, so and so. Uh, so spiritually, you have to be in place. And Ricky makes touring the globe look easy. I'm young and energetic. Uh, if you see me on stage, I'm like a bullet, boom, 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 going from all over, you know, all over the place. And, uh, and I, need, I need energy in my music. So we have a little bit of Caribbean tropical sound and, um, and we have a little bit of rock also. 
Ricky's varied musical style is a reflection of his own musical tastes. If you ask me what kind of music do you listen to, I, I wouldn't know what to answer because give me a little bit of everything, a little bit of what's good, and, 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 I, and I enjoy that. It's more than enjoyment. It's a love of music, of entertaining. You always have to be yourself when you're on stage. When I'm, I'm talking when I'm on stage, when I'm singing and dancing. It's just an explosion of, you know, emotions. <laughs> The immediate contact with, with the audience, it's just great. It gives you, I don't know, strength, power, security, uh, pampers your self-esteem, you know, it's just being, you know, with the help of a microphone, just say, okay, everybody, let's put your hands together and just seeing that action and just seeing people sing, dance, it's, oh, that is something I don't want to let go. <laughs> that is something that is fascinating. For Ricky, life without performing is not an option. If I was not a performer, I'd probably be the most frustrated guy on this planet. Uh, you know I, don't know, I don't know how to do anything else. This is my life. As a musician, he spent the first part of his life on stage. But Ricky soon developed an itch for acting. He decided to try performing in musical theater, combining his talent for singing with acting. I was singing for the first five years of my career, and uh, I just felt like I needed to try something different. I was not going to stop doing music. I just wanted to start doing something different. And those days, this producer comes to me. He's like, would you like to do theater, musical theater? So it's great. I'm not going to stop doing music, and I'm going to try something different. Yes, let me get ready for it. So I studied some drama. I studied some, uh, some acting for a little while, and, and I went into theater. Ricky eventually made it to films and won a Geraldo, the Mexican equivalent of the Academy Award. Even though he pursued many avenues of entertainment, Ricky would never think of retiring from music. This is what I enjoy the most. And sometimes people ask me, what are you going to be doing when you're 30? What are you going to be doing when you're 40? I want to be in show business. Expanding his horizons in entertainment was Ricky's first step towards a lifelong career. Next, he landed a part in a touring musical based in Mexico. I did 300 shows of, of a musical play over there. And because of the musical play, when, when we did the 300 show, the show 300, we invited some press and some producers from soap operas. Although he acted in the play, Ricky was remembered for his ability to carry a tune. But television producers quickly singled him out as a gifted actor. And while I was doing the play, some producers went to see the show and they said, you want to do a soap opera? Uh, soap operas in Mexico is like film in the United States. It's very important. Uh, so I said, why not? <laughs> Let's do it. Now, when Ricky landed a role on one of Mexico's most popular daytime dramas, he knew that it would open the door to bigger and better opportunities. Stay right where you are, because when Uncut returns, we'll find out which American show cast Ricky as the leading man in one of the most passionate of any sizzling soap opera flames. Don't go away. I mean, it was about time a love story. Even the dog has a love story. What about Miguel? Come on.